Hey guys, this is Ron. Uh, kind of like to put together a, a lab that does uh, some of the CME features or Call Manager Express features uh, that you'll find in Packet Tracer. So I know this isn't uh, specifically uh, 640.802 CCNA material, but there's enough other material in here that you can really kind of brush up on your skills while trying some other features. So let's kind of jump right into it. We'll grab a router, so the 2811. Uh, has CME on it. We'll grab a switch, 2960, drag those to the side, and we'll throw up some uh, actual devices. So we'll say we have two offices right now. Guys are working off of uh, laptops, and they both have IP phones. And they need to be able to call from one office to the other. All right. So we'll do it small scale here. Bring up our connections. We'll bring uh, fast Ethernet to our PC port. Fast Ethernet PC port. Uh, we'll take uh, our switch port and take it over to the switch. Switch port over to the switch. On the phone, we're going to have to add the inline power module because we don't have PoE. Inline power module. We'll take the computer and set it to DHCP. Take the computer and set it to DHCP. All right, last cable connection. We're going to take one of our last ports here and we're going to bring it up to Fast Ether 01. All right, so that'll be our trunk. All right, so let's go ahead and configure up our switch. Make it pretty easy. We'll just do a basic configuration here. So config T, host name. We'll call this uh, site one switch. All right. Now uh, we'll go ahead and configure up our ports uh, for our access devices. So we'll do a switch port. No, let's do it. Uh, Interface range FA uh, 0 slash 1 through 23. Switch port mode access. Spanning tree port fast. All right, so those, those ports should come up quickly now. Uh, switch port uh, access VLAN 10. So our computers will be on VLAN 10. Switch port voice VLAN 20. So our, our voice devices will be on VLAN 20. All right, we'll do an interface FA 0 slash 24, switch port mode trunk. All right, and that's it for the switch for now. Bring up our router, and this is where the majority of the configuration will be. So no for a configuration dialog, enable config T, Host name, we'll call this uh, site one router. All right. We'll go ahead and configure up our sub interfaces for the trunk. So interface FA 0 slash 1, no shut. Interface FA 0 slash 1 decimal 10. So I'm labeling or I'm calling this sub interface 10 because it's going to carry VLAN 10. So encapsulation. Uh, dot one Q and label uh, tag these as VLAN 10 IP address 192.168.0.1 255 255 255 0 we'll keep that pretty wide open uh, we'll do interface FA 0 slash 1 decimal 20 so now this is going to be for our voice users so encapsulation if I could spell encapsulation dot one Q We'll tag it as VLAN 20, IP address 172.16.0.1, 255, 255, 255, 0. All right, so the two sub interfaces are uh, up. We're green across the board as far as uh, layer 1 because we did a no shut. Uh, so we're good there. So now let's go ahead and uh, implement our loopback address interface 
loop back zero. So this is a logical address. We'll just give it an IP address of 10.0.0.1, 225, 25, 25, 25. Now typically you would you would add this IP address for a number of reasons. You might be using it for OSPF, you might be using it for other routing protocols, you might be using it for uh, as your uh, the IP that you allow Telnet to come into, you know, what have it. You can use it for a lot of different things. In our case, typically with CME, uh, you use this address uh, as your TFTP server. So when you set up TFTP on this router uh, for the firmware files for the phone, that's the address uh, that, you know, the phones are going to reach out to. So when you set up your DHCP server uh, or your DHCP pool, for your voice users, you end up pointing them to this address. So when they come up DHCP, they know where to reach out to to get their firmware files. However, this is Packet Tracer, so this isn't the real world. So if I do a do show uh, flash, uh, I don't have firmware files on here for my phones. Typically, I would load up, you know, whatever types of phones I have uh, on the network, I would load them up on my router. Uh, but in Packet Tracer, you don't need all of that. So anyway, we'll go ahead and jump into our DHCP configuration. So IP DHCP pool data network 192.168.0.0.255.255.0. Okay, so that network is the same network uh, that our VLAN 10 is using. So for default router, uh, we're going to go ahead and point them to VLAN 10 or sub-interface 10 basically. So 192.168.0.1 and then I'm not going to worry about a name server because uh, I'm just trying to get basic VoIP up here. I'm not too worried about the data users. Uh, so we'll do IP DHCP pool voice and we'll call this uh, network uh, 172.16.0.0 and then again, we need to point this to subinterface 20 this time. So default uh, router uh, 172.16.0.1. And here's where we kind of diverge. For our VoIP users, we give them uh, an option 150 IP. Now we point them basically to the uh, TFTP server uh, that we're going to be using. So I'm just going to use the loopback address. Okay. And that's it. Uh, and again, there's no real files on here, so I'm not having to do, uh, I think it's tftp-server, and you're, you're not in DHCP mode, so you do exit. TFTP, so it doesn't even look like this thing has it. So TFTP server, and then you would put flash, colon, and whatever files that you were serving up there. All right. And I don't think it's IP TFTP. Yeah, I think it's just TFTP, uh, and uh, it's just not a feature here on Packet Tracer. So let's not worry about that too much. So now that we have our DHCP pools set aside, we'll do an end, show IP DHCP uh, binding. And what we should see here is great. We have two 192 addresses, so that's our VLAN 10. So that's our two laptops out there. And now we have these two entries for 172. These are our, our phones. Now, typically, this would be the time where we would go ahead and set up uh, e-phones. But, uh, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but Packet Tracer kind of takes care of that for you. Uh, but before we even get into that, we need to specify a telephony, or how about config t, telephony service. All right, so in here, we're going to specify... Uh, the number of e-phones that we want to be able to support and the number of directory numbers that we want to be able to support. Uh, and you don't want to put really high numbers if you're not going to be using that many phones because typically you eat up memory uh, in your router that way. So we'll just do a max e-phone uh, and it does 1 through 42 here in Pack Tracer. I'm just going to do uh, 3 even though I only have 2 phones out there. So Then we'll do a max uh, directory number uh, also three and then one more thing we need to do is this IP source address so we're going to be basically pointing uh, pointing the phones 
to the CME service that uh, we want them to use. Uh, in our case, we're going to use the loopback address because we're going to house the CME on this local router. Oh, forgot. And it's going to ask for a port, and I use port 2000. Okay? So that's all we have to specify in the telephony service. Now if we do a do show ePhone, typically you wouldn't see anything right away here. Uh, but notice we already have an entry. Uh, and that entry is because Packet Tracer just automatically puts it in. In the real world, you're not going to see anything at this point. Okay? What you need uh, to do is take the MAC address of the phone. And you can find that in a couple different places. Uh, on the back of the phone, there's a sticker. Uh, you can take that MAC address. On uh, on the phone itself, let me bring one of these phones up. Uh, I don't think it lets me do it uh, here in Packet Tracer, but basically you would hit the settings button, and then there's a couple different menus, uh, and you can go down into the IP configuration and uh, look at the MAC address. Okay, So those are typically how you do it uh, in the real world. Uh, but you can also do it like we did before where you looked up in the IP DHCP pool and saw it there. You can also, last place is when we did the, let me see, was it in here? Show CDP neighbor detail. Uh, okay, it doesn't show it here in Packet Tracer, but <clears throat> again, in the real world, when you do a show CDP neighbor, instead of just being IP phone, They'll be like SEP and then the MAC address, so SEP and then the MAC address. Okay, so you can kind of find it out there too. So there are multiple places uh, to find out the MAC address of the phone. Uh, and lastly, the box that the phone came in typically also has the, uh, the MAC address on it as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do a do show run. And in Packet Tracer, again, it adds some stuff there for you. Uh, it added these two ePhone entries with the MAC address. Now, in the real world, that doesn't happen. Okay, You have to specify ePhone 1, ePhone 2, the MAC address, all that kind of information. So it, it put a little bit in there, but it's not enough to get it, to, uh, get it running. So we'll go ahead and specify our directory numbers. So we'll do a ePhone-DN and you need to specify which uh, just give it like a label or, or a number alright so this is ePhone down one and we're gonna give it number 1000 okay then we'll do an ePhone dash DN2 number 2000 okay okay so now we have two directory numbers that we can use on our ePhones and to map our phones to it we're gonna go to ePhone 1 so this is the first one uh, and we're gonna do a button now there are, there are two ways to specify it so in this case he had he's doing two lines into the, uh, for this phone so line 1 line 2 and then mapping it to directory number 2 and directory number 5 in my case I'm only gonna map it to one uh, one line and one directory number or one line and I'm going to uh, directory number one. Now one other thing that you typically do in the real world as well is specify a type. All right, And so here we're going to specify a the type of phone that you have. Uh, in this case we only have 7960 in Packet Tracer. 7960. Okay. Now we'll do a ePhone 2. We'll do a button so line one, and we're going to map it to directory number two. And then uh, we'll give it a type 7960. All right. So here in a second, there we go. We see that it has registered. Okay. So now we do show uh, ePhone. We have two entries. It's got their MAC addresses. It says they're registered. It shows their IP address, the type of phone, all that kind of good stuff. So if we've done everything right, we should be able to bring our phone up here. We have a directory number of 1,000. We'll call 2,000. All right, so we ring out. Bring up my other phone here. 
I've got an incoming call from 1000. Open it up and we are connected. I will go ahead and send Do. So that's like the Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do. And uh, there we go. We're playing Do. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Uh, that was setting up DHCP pools. That was building sub interfaces, building a trunk, uh, adding an access VLAN, and adding a voice VLAN, uh, setting our stuff up for DHCP, setting up telephony service here, uh, and then also specifying the ePhone and ePhone directory numbers. So once that was complete, now we can make uh, a phone call from one phone to the other. So I hope you got something out of the lab, and I'd uh, appreciate any kind of uh, feedback you got. Thanks for watching.